right right okay one one downside one downside of this kind of uh, path or this kind of way of getting into into job opportunities would be they have to actually sign up for a long term course to get a student visa and uh, they have to pay for that and if we if we are talking master degree i think the the fees for international students would be well close to unimaginable <laughs> to be honest i sure so there's another path Another yeah. path is to apply mm -hmm. for jobs at no multinationals. Right, right. Okay, right. large mm -hmm. organizations locally. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. these organizations have offices all around the world. Yeah, and so you know you try to apply, try to get in there in the local office that you can. Mm -hmm. And once you are in, now you have a better chance mm -hmm. than to try to find a possibility to transfer now some multinationals don't do transfers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you should certain you know people who want to try this path certainly you should study to see mm -hmm. if this is one of those organizations that will allow uh, mm -hmm. transfers but yeah. this path is also known to work basically mm -hmm. yeah all right so yeah. you know you can there are also you know, so what will be like a path that's not guaranteed to work I mean mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it still could possibly work but it's just it's not known to work which mm -hmm. is one query you just try to directly apply for jobs overseas. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I was I was thinking about also one extra option, even though it's a small option at the moment, but I was just thinking that technically with a growth of 100% remote companies, and especially they are growing in software area naturally because most software companies will be to some extent remote companies and some will be 100%. So those hundred percent remote companies, if they become more widespread, if they become more mainstream uh, in the industry, I think they will provide a huge opportunity for people who are actually not able or maybe it's too expensive for them to go to US directly, but they don't mind actually getting into a multinational company, even though it's op operating online. So right, but that's a, that's, mm -hmm. right. That's two different parts, right? There's people who mm -hmm. just want to get to who yeah, wants to yeah. move. And mm -hmm. people who doesn't mind staying, but work yeah. on the U.S. projects. Mm -hmm. So the remote companies you're talking about will be the, the latter ones. The people yes. who doesn't have to, uh, immigrate to a different country. And I actually I know quite a few developers. I mean, going from my personal contacts, maybe it's not easy to find one. But at least I I heard about those people who actually say explicitly on their blogs when they they, they already speak English, they already communicated. They say that. I could, like the developer is in Romania, in Eastern Europe, and this, he said, I could go to New York, actually I had some job offers, so I had some opportunities to go to New York, but I decided not to, why not? Because he said, here I get only like a very, very small amount of money compared to New York, but the, the expenses are also <laughs> a lot yeah. lower. And, uh, and so, you, uh, actually, you actually grew mm -hmm. up in the environment that you're already comfortable in. Why yeah. move to a foreign country exactly. where you don't know anything? Right. So in this situation, maybe the case of maybe going overseas or immigration becomes less relevant. However, the context of still becoming a specialist and a global specialist, uh, communicating with people, working on projects still uh, holds true. So they, they definitely want to grow, they want to communicate, they want to participate, but just they, they don't have the, the immigration sort of, uh, well, uh, they don't think about that at, at the moment, at this moment. So this right. could be... Yeah, and... totally. I mean, immigration, it's always mm. a, a tough thing. But again, yeah. take the, the routes that's well known, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because that maximizes the chance. Right. It's like, right. you know, when you take the route that's not well known at all, then you're trying your luck, basically. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. could happen. But, yeah. you know, it's, people don't necessarily know that it has... It has really happened. It's not a pattern right. of right. hiring, right. basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we finally come back down to uh, saying this, right? You know, you want to maximize and you want to improve your skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your skills in English, your skills in um, professional skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. Communication and skills. And then, you know, communication, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, your technical skill. Mm -hmm. And honestly, probably in this order, I mean, I will probably move these two guys around, but you kind of have to have some amount of English confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So then 
you know, so how do you, what's the shortest path getting there? Well, you want to find the environment mm -hmm. that supports this, right? What yeah. do you say, what's the skills that you need to improve? Then, mm -hmm. then that's what you have to work on. You got to yeah. find environment that allows you to work on this. Mm -hmm. And what would those environments be? Mm -hmm. Well, let's say what they are not going to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be language exchange. Yes. Well, let's, let's define it as any artificial environment, like uh, the way I would define it. Anything artificial, anything less than real won't get them. <laughs> right. That would be my, my definition. And let's say what would be mm -hmm. an environment that can provide this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is good? Mm -hmm. Okay, it would be a project. Yeah. Because a project would not only allows you to work on speaking English, but you mm -hmm. also ask you to perform these things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically, right? You want to be at the very minimum on the project. Mm -hmm. Can I mean honestly, the worst situation, the worst type of project. Uh, when I only say worse, I just mean that it's not as good as, say, some of the other type of projects. But it still can mm -hmm. work. It would be mm -hmm. like a, a hackathon project. Mm -hmm. Now, why is hackathon project not, not as good? It's because hackathon project is very short. Yeah. It's structured, couple days, mm -hmm. you're done, yeah. you're good to go, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. In this mm -hmm. situation, what could you learn? You could possibly learn mm -hmm. a new library, mm -hmm. a new platform. Like say, for example, Angular 2, mm -hmm. right? React, mm -hmm. whatever. You can build some cool thing with it. And it's cool, mm -hmm. you know, even something police. I actually went to, uh, did a, a HoloLens mm -hmm. uh, class. That was two days oh. long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And build something. But honestly, in two days, you're not going to build anything mm -hmm. substantial. No matter what yeah. it is, it is going to be small things. In hackathon projects, uh, there is typically no client or no deliverables, and mm -hmm. there is no no like pressure of uh, deliver. Like uh, there, there is a time pressure. That's a good thing. Yeah. But on the other hand, like people don't do their best and don't don't actually no uh, scope. Right. Yeah, no you scope. define your own scope. Mm -hmm. You define your own deliverable, and that's good. Some people will define very well. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. this is where we talk about already say know yourself. Mm -hmm. And know yourself is talking about saying, what type of person are you? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you someone who pushes yourself very hard? Mm -hmm. Or are you someone who says, okay, I kind of wander around a little bit and if there's stuff that's happening that mm. I need to do, then I would do it. Yeah. Mm. You know, tip diff I mean, people who push themselves, like Elon Musk, mm -hmm. right? It's like, you know, he, it's like no one needs to manage him. He just mm. does whatever because he right. pushes himself harder than anyone else pushes him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if any any of those person is not going to be watching this video at all. <laughs> I'll just mm. say that. You know? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, they they are already they already know. I mean, I'm explaining to them stuff that they already know. Basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they already know that they need to learn English. They already know that they need to improve their professional skills. They figure yeah. these things out before we talk about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, and they know them. They know themselves so well that they're going to be pushing themselves toward that direction anyway, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But there's a huge amount of people, uh, myself included, out there that mm -hmm. would be would do ourselves good when there's external mm -hmm. forces yeah Motivate. You know, mm -hmm. someone who says mm -hmm. you should do something and you agree yeah. to do that you know mm -hmm. as a matter of fact i mean let me put it this way they're in the startup environment a lot of people say that they will take money from vc even mm -hmm. when they're already rich Mm -hmm. Okay. The reason why is because VC money mm -hmm. means commitment. Yeah. So when they take that VC money, 
I mean, they know mm. that they don't have to take the VC money because they can fund the project themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they take the VC money, they know that now there's someone that they need to hold themselves accountable to. Yes. And mm. they like that structure because mm -hmm. when you had to hold yourself accountable to someone else, now you have to deliver. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so a lot of very successful people still do mm -hmm. things this way. You mm -hmm. know, it's like even like, uh, uh, you know, like Elon Musk's startups are funded. Mm -hmm. He could fund them himself, but mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's mm -hmm. true. Even sometimes, like a peer pressure, like like when you when you actually start working on a hackathon project. I mean, I, I have very little experience, but uh, I, I felt it. But basically, one reason, one 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 thing that motivates me is that uh, I don't want to let other people down. Like for example, I could just. Uh, skip it and just go do something else but other people are waiting for me so like obviously i i have to do produce something and then i still have to communicate so to some extent they bring value those hackathon projects uh, one one thing i personally found uh, from my research is that very very few hackathons are available online in english so you have a chance to work with people in different countries and uh, unfortunately, we don't have opportunities like this. Uh, I mean, it's not like every every week you can just do another one. Uh, the, most of these hackathons are offline events, like uh, just people get together. And I, I think that many non-native speakers might even hesitate to join one, even if they go to US, like for example, to, to learn English or something. So I think they will be hesitating because they simply won't be able to handle the conversation between native speakers and that's why they, they will be mm -hmm. they shy, shy away from those events so I, sometimes i wish that there would be more hackathon opportunities available online to people at least to try and at least to kind of to get used to at least some of it or maybe at least work with some other people um, yeah right mm -hmm. so as we say here, okay, hackathon project is it's it's not ideal, but it's, it's yeah yeah it's it's better it than goes, nothing. Yeah, it goes maybe halfway <laughs> to right. to address the issue. Mm -hmm. Right, it's better than nothing. You know, it's mm -hmm. you can have yeah. a chance to get together. You can you can do something. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say so. What are better projects? Okay, mm -hmm. 